Hello and welcome back to Tommy's Top Picks Weekly Roundup Podcast episode 112. I'm your host Tommy, joined by John. How is it going? My voice is shot from Star yep. City Games Philadelphia yesterday, <laughs> the Battle Harden. I stuck it out and played all eight games and now my voice is almost gone. The sacrifices he makes, guys. The sacrifices he <laughs> makes. Sacrifices the podcast for the love of fab. It does. It's all good. It do. It was fun. It was worth it. It started out rough, but it got better. Yeah, your messages so. to me were like, oh, I was like, oh, that, this might be a short day for him. I got up and I walked outside after the first match. We'll get into that. Uh-oh. But uh, today we're going to be talking about that uh, and a bunch of fab. And then we're going to be talking about Fallout because that uh, magic set just released. And then we're going to be talking about stars or Star Wars, not Star City Games, Star Wars um, Unlimited that also had its official release on Friday. And we got to play some games. So that was a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, but first, yeah, let's talk about um, I made it to Star City Games Philadelphia, the Battle Harden for Flesh and Blood. There were... I think 124 is what I remember. The number being people like yeah. participants. Mm-hmm. It yeah, was a pretty big the, event. Yeah, in the main tournament. What was it last year when when I went? I think it was like slightly it, less. Was it less? Oh, I thought it was like two or three hundred, but I couldn't remember. No, no. Yeah, because I I can't remember the numbers at the different things because I'm never really a contender. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did place pretty well though. Um, so it started out rough. My first round was against, uh, Reinar, where I lost turn one. So I played, I went first, I played a Nourishing Emptiness. He gave me his equipment and a card and blocked it out. Felt good. Grabbed his equipment early. Threw a red draw swords in Arsenal. Felt good for turn two. And then his comeback turn on turn one was to berserk into blood rush bellow into essentially enough damage to kill me that turn because <laughs> he intimidated three cards out of my hand so i could only block with one and then even throwing all my equipment at it he even had a sand sketch plan in there to gain more action points and he just kept going getting those six go agains which are really eight it's because of blood rush bellows Mm-hmm. And yeah, he got there. He got there turn one, and there was nothing I could do about it. I even asked him after. I was like, is there anything I could have done differently to prevent this? And he was like, nope. That's just, this deck does that sometimes. And I was like, cool, that's interactive and fun. Mm-hmm. So then I stepped outside and texted John. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh no. <laughs> yeah, that that's rough. I don't, um, I mean, we were talking about this, and we'll, we'll talk about it a little bit with uh, Star Wars, but like yeah. lack of interactions for me is like a killer. Now I get it. There's sometimes where it's fun. It's like a chess game. You're looking a few moves ahead sure. sort of thing. Yes. But when it's just inevitable, it's like, Oh, there's nothing you can do about it. There's no real play to it. It doesn't really matter. It's just already over and you don't know it yet. Um, yeah, yeah that, that can be a little rough. That's not as much fun. And, and I think Reinar's there. We, we texted on this a little bit, mm-hmm. probably because he was so underpowered for so long. They had to design a little bit out of the safety zone of the main framework of Fab to make him a bit Kano-ish, you know, like mm-hmm. he goes off. And when you do that, that's just how you get something powered up enough to function in a competitive space. Because it's, you know, it's high roll, right? It's not every turn, every time. It's right. if you pull the right things. But um, that's just, I think they just had to do that to get Reiner functional within the larger framework of Fab. And unfortunately, it's not fun. It's uninteractive. And, and hopefully it LLs and out, you know, sooner rather than later. Because um, I feel like that's the only reason to do that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, he saw 17 cards that turn. That's insane. That's insane. And yeah. you couldn't do anything about any of it. No. no. Yeah. And no I, one could. It's not we, just like you couldn't. It was <clears throat> I went back how that's set up. Who could, yeah. who could stop that? I went back and did the math. And if I just blocked as soon as I could mm-hmm. with everything, like all 12 block in my hand, and because I had four three blocks. And well, then. You, no, you, you didn't because you, you got. You got intimidated, right? No, I know, I know. But if those intimidates didn't happen, 
is what I'm saying. We did the math, and if I had block, it had been able to block with all twelve of those, I still would have died because he presented sixty damage. Jeez, yeah, it was, yeah. That's just sometimes you have bad luck. Because yeah. <laughs> so. you have forty from my health, and then you have twelve from my hand, and then you have two, three, four, five, six, seven from armor. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So then I go into game two, and I play one of our local prisms, which is not a great uh, matchup for Kasai. And then, so, lost that one. Did have a cheeky turn, played Flurry turn, and brought him down to 18. So, that felt fine, I guess. It was fine. <laughs> it went better than normal games against Prism. It's fine. Yeah. Um, and then, game three, uh, I played against a Bolton. And I was like, alright, this is going to go a little bit better. This is where things change. And then I got double Luminod. Followed by Illumina the second, the next turn. And so, again, threw all my cards at it. Nothing. I have to ask. I yeah. have to ask. Do you think people are stacking their decks in these tournaments? I. Because that, the odds of you going into two different decks, right? Ignoring Prism, just a yeah. bad matchup, right? Going into two different decks that optimally pull their best possible combos in the first few turns. Like. It was, no, this was about mid game. It was. Oh, okay, it was okay, okay. So they it set was, up for it. It took a while. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. It, there yeah, was I was like, the odds forward. of that seem very, very slim. Yeah. yeah, it was basically just. It was. It was a very close game until that turn. Do you? Do you? Do you? Uh, cut and like shuffle the other person's deck or anything? Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, then, yeah. Then, the, then, yeah. The chances are zero. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, at, at local armory and stuff, I'll just. Cut the top yeah, tap part. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it's at, just like whatever. Yeah. yeah. At um at these events, I do. I'll do three shuffles. Yeah, it makes sense. That, that's the way to go. Yeah, I won't like manhandle their deck or anything. No, no, just keep it on the up yeah. and up. Yeah, yeah, it's all good. Um, but then so just terrible luck. <laughs> terrible luck due to your own shuffling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but then things well. turned around. Um, I played a pistol dash. And sideboarded for an aggro dash, but still was able to get there. Um, I had a blood on her hands turn uh, that got me there. So I got my first win round four. So you're the one that's stacking the deck now. You got so sick of <laughs> facing stack decks, you stacked your own. I see. I see. No, they didn't block a spoils of war turn that gave me six. And then two turns later, I drew blood on her hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. I know. I know how that yeah. deck goes. Yeah. Blah. <laughs> um, and then I played. That's kind of funny, though, just to pause on that yeah, yeah. for a second, that your Kasai combo is what won you that match yeah. in the new Kasai. So, yeah. like, the old the old tried and true, right? Oh, that's how I built the deck. I didn't build it around the new Raisin Army. I built it around Blood Honor. You don't use any, but, like, her, her main ability is different. You know what I mean? Like, it's still the tried and true. It still works, and you don't need courage. It's even better. It's better? Yeah. I did not realize that. Because it turns your swords off for the turn. But you don't because generate copper with anything but spoils, right? Spoils and um, uh, oh shoot, I'm I always blank on this card. There's one that like the next hit create a copper. Okay, is it a new one? A heavy yeah. hitters card? Yeah. Okay. Okay. No, no, it's an Everfest card. Yeah, I was gonna say that's weird because that's that would be the only copper generation in that set, right? Yeah. Because yeah. heavy hitters is all gold, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so yeah. it's an older one. All right, yeah. but it's also well, just I value off of the gold is the other part is like the mid rangey part of the deck and then the spiky part of the deck is the copper is like if it's, so you if do generate play. gold throughout and then use yes. it to get cards yeah, yeah. that makes sense that makes yeah sense. and then being able and playing three cash-ins and mm -hmm. being able to use that gold to draw two cards instead of one and not pay any resources but just pay one card yeah that's a that's a power up yeah yeah, yeah. for sure got it interesting i, I did had, not realize you built it around the old yeah the old win con yeah this is my kasai deck and uh it's, um, uh, what is it? The, um, yeah, I probably could add some more copper. And now that I've played it more in person, I do want to, there are a couple changes I want to make. The Seduce Secrets, or, is that it? Some, yeah, Seduce, sedu uh, Seduction. Something or another. Something, yeah. What's it look like? What's it do? It, uh, 
lets you look at your opponent's hand. Mm -hmm. And then if it's played from Arsenal, you draw a card at instant speed. Mm -hmm. So you start off the turn by drawing a card, turning off your sword. So you just need to gain go again, and then they're free already. And you also now have the information of how much block is in your opponent's hand, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which was pivotal in many games. Except there was one game where I had one in Arsenal, and then I drew into the other two. And instants don't block. No, they don't. <laughs> Not great. <laughs> so the amount of non-block in my deck is what I'm... I may go down to two of those and then find some other stuff to get out because I do kind of want to add uh, Slice and Dice back in. Yeah. Because I think that'll really help with the gold generation. And it's a three block. That's uh, fun. Reds and yellows. Uh, maybe blues, we'll see. You want to stick with as much red and yellow as you can for that type of course. I mean, that's her that's her whole deal, yeah. And then next up, I played against the Leviya, hadn't played against the Leviya in a long time, but I got there. That was fun. Uh, no blood on her hands, turn just consistent tempo value. So that's now this is round five, right? This is round five, yeah, gotcha. And then round six, it's starting to blur now. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, it's all good. Just yeah, talk about what you remember. Yeah. I was just thinking like how far oh, you are I down remember. the ladder at this point, up the ladder, you yeah. know, sort of thing. Yeah. So now I'm three two. You yeah, you're two two, and then that makes it three two, right? No, no. I was I lost the first three and then I came oh, back. Oh, you lost the first three? I lost the first three. Oh, right. That's right. You said that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, I was thinking two, but yeah. yeah. And then I won the next two. And then the next the one prism was, was the given loss. Yes. That's and, why I only had two in my head. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I lost the Bolton, the prism and the Reinar. And then the next matchup was against another prism and I took it. Wow. I got there. So it's so possible there. Yes. There are different prism decks. There are ones that, uh, revolve around the heralds, but mainly, but also play a bunch of, uh, auras. And those are the ones okay. that Kasai struggles with because it mm -hmm. just you can't really pop the auras and still maintain your value and generate gold and just it doesn't work with your game plan. Mm -hmm. um, but this other prism basically wants to play two heralds a turn and then hopefully can arsenal a attack reaction and goes around the attack reactions. Mm -hmm. And so being able to use that card and look at your opponent's hand and then see that oh. These attack reactions don't block. And they're in your hand right now. Yeah. It's the time to go off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. <laughs> and That's so, cool. Yeah. And they start at lower health, so you have that advantage. And so we got there on that one against Prism, so that felt good. So now, I forgot Prism was lower health. Yeah. It's only a couple points, right? 32. Like 32. Oh, okay. Eight. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, and then... So now I'm back up to 3-3. Three, three. And then I play good old Sin from Pittsburgh. Um, so it was fun chatting with him. He was on Vince's set, and I took it there. It was a close game. Um, but that was an interesting one. I went 1AB, because that's all you need against Vincent. So that was my first AB game. And it wasn't really too bad. It's just you pitch into all the... You, pay off, you can pay all the rune chance because you play enough yellows and blues. And then you just hit them with the two card hands or one card hand if you were able to generate vigor the next turn. Swing twice, threaten the goal, and then always be ready to have a snapback turn when they have an off turn. Um, but it did get very close. I think I got down to like one or two, which was very scary because they have the uh, arcane deal one arcane damage mm -hmm. that's impreventable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So that was very You're like, I am risking it. I'm in danger. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then, so that was fun. Always good to talk to Sin. And then round eight was against podcast listener Jamie. So if you're listening, hi, Jamie. It was great hi, meeting Jamie. you in person. Uh, it was a lot of fun. He was on. Thanks for listening. Yeah. It's always nice to be recognized. Um, he was on Fi and we got there. Um, How's five play in Tikasai? I 
can very efficiently block it and have two okay. uh, turn hands. And just you kind of have to pray that they don't go have crazy art of war turns. Yeah, get their combo, combo, yeah. swambo, crazy wide. Yeah, he, turn off. Yeah, he pulled off. A, uh, he got like six wide, and then or five wide, and then uh, max uh, pouncing links out lava burst, and I was like, oh right, that's a card. <laughs> I forgot. Yeah. That's a card. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> so he came and smacked me for that, yeah. um, but it, that was kind of like the. Uh, turning point where like I could just eat that damage and then snap back with enough to gain tempo back for the rest of the game. Yeah, see that I think that would be hard thinking Once, about how Fi likes to play. You have to block and because of otherwise Kasai gets too much value and yes. Fi does not like to block. Correct. So, it, it really yeah. weakens their ability to swing. Yeah, Fi cannot have an off turn against Kasai. It needs yeah, all gas, no breaks. And because once it starts coming in, you're you're not blocking Kasai as Fi. So really, you no. don't block. Oof, you can. That you, seems yeah, real you can. hard. No, you can. You can. And you, <laughs> yeah. but it, you don't. You try not to until later. Of course, yeah. You want to minimize your block and keep the yeah. pressure on. And so of course, they, like this, off the spoils of war turn, you still block. Like those key pivotal ones, you do. Yeah. But the, just the threatening a gold, let them have it, kind of a thing, because it's just doesn't trade efficiently with all the two blocks that you have. Yeah, that's true. I forgot about that. If I a hundred percent like two blocks. Yeah. yeah. And it's a lot of attack actions, which, you know, uh -huh. boost sabers to three. So it just doesn't right. really it's super work. Not worth it. Yeah. 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 Um, but he was the only five, which was really surprising mm. out of the whole event. There was only one five. There was a bunch of Katsus running around. So Ninja was represented. Yeah, Katsu's like the new jam right now, I think. Yeah. Everyone's everyone's prepping for uh, Mist. Yeah. But it's interesting you said about like stacking cards and stuff. Yeah, why? Because we were, uh, as I was driving the crew home last night, uh, the finals were just going off, and there was mm -hmm. a Kano in the finals. And I guess this is all not confirmed, but what people were saying is I guess there was some shenanigans with stacking. Oh no, for real in a top eight, why would you even risk it? And supposedly it was going on all day. Oh, so I wasn't wrong. My instincts aren't wrong. <laughs> we're and, at the age of the game where the little cheater people that ego and, is so, uh, so delicate that they have to cheat to play the game. And maybe uh, some power cards up. were upside down. What does that mean? I don't understand. So when you, the deck is facing you, you can see the split in the sleeve because it's not closed on the top because it's upside down. I see. You know what I mean? Oh, oh, I do. So they basically sleeve some things backwards to make it mark. No. Um, okay, then now I don't understand. So you, you know how your deck all faces the same way? And then, so like typically you put the bottom of the card towards you, right? and then mm -hmm. the top of the card away from you towards your opponent. Mm -hmm. If they aren't all the same, so like the bottom of a card sleeve is closed, the top is open. Yeah. If one is reversed, it's pretty easy to see where in the deck that is. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Yeah, That's, yeah, right. that's, yeah, that's yeah, what I said. Yeah. yeah, that's what I meant. Got okay. it. Okay. And so you basically top load or bottom load, and you top load, say, your special card so you can see them coming is that the idea yeah 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 nice. yeah got it um so you can see where they are in the deck so they're not stacking it but they are marking essentially yes yeah yeah and that's not again not confirmed we still don't know yeah but. i mean stacking is a lot harder to pull off especially yeah. in like on something on camera because you you know people know how to do trick shuffling and yeah. stuff like that, right? And people know what to look for for trick shuffling in, in card tournaments. Um, but yeah. the, uh, yeah, marking it can be a lot more subtle and still effective for cheating. Yeah. So. Like I was it's just driving, they were talking in the back. But yeah, um, I hope it's not true. Yeah. Um, I guess the other rumor been a was very good community overall for this sort of stuff. Every time anyone's even vaguely been on the edge of like kind yeah. of sniping or anything, it's been called out as a negative and, and, 
you know, admonished, uh, which yeah. I really appreciate. It's always kept the game in a very like, this is supposed to be good games, not yes. win at any cost games. Right. Yeah. Um, so, which I always appreciate about fab. So if it is true, I'm sure they'll do something about it. They always have. So absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would. Yeah, they will. Um, and then the other thing, I guess things weren't necessarily paid for correctly. Oh, was this fatigue and just stupid stuff or was it like, just like, Kano nonsense that usually non Kano players are just like, okay, don't realize, and don't verify because it's Kano nonsense. Like right. when I'm playing, I obviously trust our local Kanos. So whenever I play against them, I just take whatever they say and whatever. Yeah. They yeah. Do yeah. You're just like, like, uh-huh. All right. How much is coming at me? Cool. Okay. <laughs> you suck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but now that, to be fair and i want to i want to lean in the side of caution because yeah. like i said the community tends to be good that person may have just learned wrong and been doing it wrong the whole Absolutely. time and everyone may have, just yeah. let it play the yeah. whole time and they assume they're doing it right but are yeah. wrong you know? i'm i'm, I'm happen. not saying that there's any there was any ill intentions because i do not yeah. know it yeah, could yeah. very well have just been not knowing i can say i've gone to a tournament after playing wrong for months and months and months and been called out on something i didn't realize was a rule yeah <laughs> that definitely happened i think the only road to nationals i went to or whatever the big one at red Cats was uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i was like oh i've been playing that wrong literally for months and no one's ever called me on it <laughs> so it does happen yeah um He's like, we'll call a judge over if you don't trust me. I was like, I trust you, but if you want to call the judge, feel free. And the judge came over and he's like, no, yeah, you can't do that. I was like, oh, I, I had no idea. <laughs> yeah. I think and, it was something yeah. with the tunic and ice or something like that. Yeah. And then, on, but on the flip side, it wasn't all negative. Obviously, that's just one instance. We do have, we had some new players in our locals that this was their like big first flesh and blood event. And they were all saying how nice the community was because they've, they come, they're transplants from magic and other mm -hmm. games and uh, just trying to find a new home, which they found flesh and blood, which is awesome. And uh, they all came up to me after rounds and were saying how great everyone was and how nice everyone was and how different it was than like these kind of events for other games. Oh yeah. Yeah. I think you is known as like a toxic waste oh, land yeah, yeah um and then magic has a lot of the win at any cost mentality so you yeah. get a lot of you get a lot of the sniping and stuff it's like well you didn't know about their own trigger i can't help you you know yeah. that sort of stuff yeah. and it's like no play a freaking straight game guys yeah. yeah the very experienced magic player said that usually in a magic event of this many rounds you run into like two or three assholes of course yeah but yeah this one he had a smooth sailing the whole time had a bunch of fun um it's awesome I think a group of people dropped and then tried to do a heavy hitters draft that didn't fire because Star City Games communication of stuff was awful because I also oh, I heard I heard of this twice, right? So yeah. there's the six people trying to make it fire. Or yeah, they need two more people to fire the draft. And then so they go on the announcement speakers. And this is at two different times that I heard the story <laughs> from two different people. One was part of the six trying to get it to fire and then the other was part of the two trying to join and they were told to the two were told to wait and they were going to find the other six again and then they were just like oh no one told you it's not going to fire because the other six dispersed <laughs> and so they had six they made an announcement they had two people come and try and join and it didn't fire <laughs> okay <laughs> Yeah, Star City Games has a hard time with a lot of that stuff. Yeah, which I mean, I get it. It's a big event, but like, and honestly, I don't think they focus on Fab. No, Lorcana was surprisingly big. I was well, not anticipating I, that. I was like, what was the surprising part there? Because I feel like that's a given these days. Player wise, player wise. Yeah, you, why? Why is that surprising? I don't know. It just took me aback of how. So you know how like did you hear how many were there? No. Like what was the no. okay, I was just curious if you had a number on that. No. Yeah. And then of course magic was huge, I'm sure. Yeah. And yeah. I overheard a lot of talk about people saying, like, oh, I'm playing magic today, but I'm gonna play Lorcana tomorrow. So it Lorcana's grabbing magic players too. Yeah, of course. Of course. It's a similar uh 
skill style, I would say. Yeah. You know, like a lot of rando is in it, you know? Yeah. But you know how, like, we would go to these Star City game events and you'd look at the shops and they would all be magic. And then some of them may have, like, a little fab section. Mm-hmm. Almost all of them already had, like, large Lorcana sections. Yeah. L- Lorcana is big. It's it's going to be huge because it's bringing in the wives. It's bringing in the others. There were a lot of women there, too. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's what I mean. Like, it is huge. And again... For me, I see it as always good for magic because eventually they all upgrade it to the old school classic. Um, I mean, it, they either leave card games yes, or that's they what, go to that's magic. What's, that was, was going to be my... Yeah. Be my <laughs> now, granted, yeah, so, most of them will probably leave card games yes. rather than go to magic, yes. but uh, especially what kind of fans I imagine. Yeah. I'm curious what the community is like over there because of how many, how big it is. It's going to be hard to keep it as a positive community. Yeah, I, don't, um, I think it's just, it's too big to, I think, and we'll get into it, but I think Star Wars is going to be a similar thing. Why? What do you mean? Like as big as Lorcana? Yeah, it's just neither Lorcana or Star Wars is ever going to have that small, growing, positive community at the beginning, like Flesh and Blood did. Yeah, it's just a, a f- an it just, it comes of onto people. The you scene can't control and, it. Yeah, right, yeah, 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 right. yeah. Yep. Yep. That's how I felt about like at the pre-release and I, I started getting those inklings and now I'm just more certain of it that it's just going to be too big of a game to have that kind of grassroots growth thing. I yep. think, I think star Wars has a better chance than Lorcana, but I still don't think it's going to happen. And the reason I say that is Lorcana is already in big box stores. Star Wars is staying in local game stores for now. Really? Yes. That is shocking. Yes. I I have high doubts on that. Lasting. Yeah, right, right, right. But what I think because yeah. it's 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 uh, was it Asmodee or, or uh, F- fantasy, uh, fantasy flight? Fantasy flight. Yeah. yeah, which they are. They well, I don't know. Now that I think about it, do they sell them to WalMarts and stuff? Board games and stuff, they do. Yeah. Yeah, so I'd be shocked if it didn't end up. Maybe they just didn't work out the agreements yet. Yeah, it may be like they just want to build. They know yeah, how start, important start, LGS is. Yeah. Exactly. Start with a place you can play, and then yeah. as it expands, then do all the work to take take that because it's a risk to get into it is so Walmart or whatever that you know you you basically rent shelf space, and if you don't sell through there, you just lost a ton of money. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I mean, Star City Games was a ton of fun. Cool. But I lost That's my funny. Place. Couple, yeah, a couple of weeks ago, you were a little like, eh, I'm not so sure if I'm going to have a good time or a lot to do or what. You know, you're kind of like hesitant, yeah. it sounded like. It was the people. And then I was super tilted after the first three games. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Then I got the text and I was like, yeah. oh, no, he's going to regret going. Yeah. And then I didn't hear from you the rest of the day. And then I saw on Discord, you're like, I'm, I'll be home in 20 minutes. This is like at 10 o'clock. I'm like, oh, oh, he, he did some stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I stuck it out. I stuck it out because I was having yeah. fun. I was meeting good people. And hanging out with people I don't get to see very often. And, uh, yeah. Got to talk to a bunch of people. Talked to, had dinner. Uh, Tommy Fresh joined us, the crew, for dinner. We went to Bonefish Grill after. It was fun. Mm -hmm. Um, And then, yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's a community event. I enjoy being around the people. It was fun. So what do you think about the big news? about the new products oh yeah that blew my mind i think it's a leak or did they officially do it i think it was a leak and then they did officially do it they did officially i think it was like it leaked just a little bit before because it did come out on their social channels oh yeah that's right i did see something about that it was uh james white i believe said something specific like the most demanded product of all time or something, something like that so there you go you got what you wanted you were saying you wanted this like three weeks ago yeah no, I think this is great. So we got um, pre-constructed CC starter decks coming. I think this is huge for the game. I think this is very exciting. I do have my concerns. What's um, that? So let's go through the bullet points of what we know. Yeah. First, it is the most requested product from stores and players. I agree. Obvious. Two, designed to be competitive at armory level. Great. Is it really, though? No, uh, but that's okay. Yeah. Three will contain new and reprinted cards. Yep. When you print new cards, D 
do you get you get the like Dorinthia effect where people will buy Dorinthia Reinar effect where there's one card in there that you need. Hopefully they give you a full playset for CC. So people don't just buy a bunch of these have to buy three of these boxes or whatever. Yeah. Uh yeah, I'd hope so. But yes. you know. Uh the reprinted cards. Are the powerhouses in there? Is CNC in there? Is E Strike in there? Is Art of War in there? I would say probably, but it's hard to say. Yeah. So these are all just questions and concerns. They're yeah, not yeah, yeah. it's just my thought process when I saw this. Um or maybe they leave that out and that's how you upgrade them to full power. That's what I'm hoping. Especially yeah, like Yeah, because that's not cards. uncommon, at yeah. least in magic. You know, you get the commander and then you go get the the power staples to fill in the, the crap cards that drop in there. Right. Because yeah. I mean, I think if we see command I don't think the market will react well to those cards being reprinted in this amount why in this way like why would why wouldn't they like having those staple cards i like i would be i mean it's a player market everyone wants the cards to be cheaper so putting more in i I figured they'd celebrate that right the players would yes yeah but i think it could skew collectors away again right after they started coming back Uh, i don't believe that they've they're coming back (laughs) i i don't know where that came from i've never heard that and uh the data does not support that okay Um, well in my head yeah yeah i mean i don't i don't see that there's some collectors that never left for sure and some are buying stuff but but just go look at the price of the marvels they're all down into the right there's no no one's collecting singles at least yeah um that said uh now staple useful cards are being bought up so yes. I don't like I said I don't think collectors are buying things. I think players there's more players and thus yeah. they're anything that's super needed they're it's just running out. You know, will they be um, black border or white border? Well, so let's get to the other part that that ties to what you just said though the limited quantities. We're not there yet because all right, all right. we have a bullet point that I really really like. Okay, exclusive to active armory gem stores. Okay. So places that are holding regular armories, not places that just get fab. Can get this. Right. But I feel like those are one and the same. Are they not? No. There are stores that get fab but don't run fab events. Okay. Which ones? Do you know of any? <laughs> There's the one right by me that I tried to get to offer my assistance in running a demo and never heard back. So. Oh, wasn't it a small shop though? Like yeah, really? Yeah. Yeah. So but it's like they are room. able to have fab. They run yeah. other games, but they aren't running fab. Well, That's yeah. If saying. you have limited space, you don't yes. run fab because it doesn't bring in the the dollars. So you run right. the things that do because you have limited space. Yeah. They that, have, that I understand. But I, they I that. they have open nights for it that they could. Okay. Do yeah. Well, and that's. So this is where I don't find that to be that compelling. I mean, I like it from a principle standpoint and a, a, a feels good. Yeah. But a uh, reality standpoint, how many fake events have run that we know of alone? True, true. So no, this yeah. does nothing. Yeah. <laughs> this does nothing. You like to think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's a nice concept, but yeah, reality is it will be gamed. Yeah, and then here's if, my... If it's important to game it, but honestly, for this product, is it... Imp- like, I don't even think they'll put the effort in to game it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> okay, so you don't get these armory decks, which are going to be limited quantities and tightly allocated. Yeah, that's the next bullet point. Um, if we are trying to grow the player base and be more inclusive with this, why is it limited quantities and tightly allocated? Agreed. This one, I think, is the biggest miss, um, especially with new cards. Yes. That that that. Because the, so, the players that play that class are going to want those new cards. So here's the thing, and here's, I mean, okay, so this is where it's actually, we're at a, a pivot point on FAB, and I think we've hinted at this and talked about it a little bit before. We're at this pivot point where the way the meta is structured, it's very open, and as a result, having limited quantities of these to come in and potentially not spike, but be competitive in an armory yeah. might be good, and that actually kind of lends itself to maybe there are reprints in this of it CC does and, yeah. and you know what I mean? 
because if you put CNC in this and it's limited quantities, that doesn't hurt the value of it, but it does add a little bit more product to the market, see, but not I, too much. I see that. Yeah. And yeah, it, it, right? could, it could, and then it's actually they competitive. Use, they could use useful. a little bit more. And so it's only are, limited. Yeah. If you are going to so, add a little bit more, this is the yeah. way to do it. Yeah. It might actually be okay. If these decks are really powerful, like actually have useful L's, actually have CNC's, That's the other actually question, have, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. If they like actually are competitive at the armory level, then limited quantity is good. It's just, I think everyone doubts that they're competitive at the armory level. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so, I mean, that, I think that's the, I think that's the balance. If they really are actually like you drop this deck against your locals and you can win, yeah. uh, then, then yeah, I mean, I think they hit it right by limiting it. Yeah. Um, and that's assuming you know, power reprints that are worth more than 40 bucks. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. Cause it's $40. Exactly. MSRP. Yeah. If the cards in there are worth more than $40, having limited quantities is not a terrible thing. Yeah. People will get mad, but how, who cares? You get mad no matter what people yell about everything. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't matter. You could do it any which way and someone's going to scream about how it's wrong. Yes, uh, so don't worry about the crowd, worry yeah. about what the impact is on your game, your meta, yeah your overall ecosystem. And, you know, I think if it is a powerhouse and it does have reprints and it's cheaper than the cards that are in there itself, that spikes interest in gym holding stores, right? Yes. They get to sell stuff at a profit. Wow. Amazing. Right. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like yeah. it does actually hit all the marks you want to hit. So if these are hundred percent accurate bullet points, then this may be a huge win for the ecosystem slash LGS, which is a good idea. Cause guess what? It'll, encourage other stores to open gym accounts and start doing events and you know it starts to tr trigger that uh positive reinforcement cycle yeah especially if they do these every couple quarters with yeah. different different ones yeah because they're not going to come like, out with every yeah, yeah think about it okay two times a year you get a drop of a product that makes you money that draws more people in yeah that encourages events, you know, people want to drop in with these cool like that's a move and also it it would assuming everything we're saying is true, uh, help you manage the market. Remember, yeah. remember yeah. James's comment, how he said secondary products, other type products are going to help manage the supply of cards that are in high demand, but they don't want to do like a HP again or whatever. Olympia's payoff card that was talked about. Exactly. Or, and a, as well as uh, CNC should be in this product based on that conversation point. Yes. You know what I mean? Like yeah, that he said these no were the coming. ways he was going to control these extra cars that are in high demand. Yeah. So assuming this is the product he was talking about, but uh, yeah. I do assume it is because yeah. I think he said it was sometime in the first half of this year. Yeah. And this is Q2 2024. Yeah. yeah. Subject so, to change. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Everything is, yeah, everything is subject to change. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, this may be a huge success, even though it will get a lot of Twitter hate. Uh, Ye oh yeah. Oh yeah. But toxic fandom is toxic fandom. Can't can't escape it. Yeah. 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 I you know, I yeah, if this is a hundred percent accurate, if it does have the power cards, if we do get like, could you imagine if the card value, if the E V is like literally inverted? Yeah, exactly. Like, then the stores open it. A hundred dollars. Well, so okay, so stores buy it open it and put them on a single shelf they never had in the store before yep. to sell to, you know yep. what I mean? Like yep. that's not a bad thing either. That actually helps the community, the ecosystem as well. But I think, I think players will find that kind of scummy. Of course they will. Cause it's one thing to open boxes. It's another to open starter decks. Again, you can't win. Oh, Players I know, will I find know, everything I know, scummy. I know. I know. <laughs> you can, you can print just, it to a billion and everyone would scream about that. I oh, mean, you're that destroying the value of my CNCs yeah. or not have power in it. Oh, this isn't actually functional in armories. You're a liar. You know, you can't win. So do the thing that's best for the whole ecosystem. Yeah. Yeah. And no, I think I, that is like having stores open product to sell singles. My God, that would be amazing for Fab. That's not something that's done. Stores do not open product to sell singles, really, you know? 
one of our local stores opened a bunch of Star Wars to sell singles. Exactly. Like Star Wars can do it, but Fab can't get there. And it's yeah. because of the EVs are bad, right? Like it's well, just not the worth owner's it. also a massive Star Wars fan. Well, okay. Okay. Nerddom fandom is still a thing, right? <laughs> yes. Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> but still, it's, I mean, this may be a huge win. If, it, if it's 100% accurate, take the heat, James White, you know, which it sounds like he's already intending to just yeah. based on the previous interview and everything. Take the heat. The fans will scream on Twitter. You say, yep, I understand. We'll do better next time. And you keep doing it anyways, because guess what? This is how you make the actual ecosystem function. Yeah, this is huge. This is like, like it said, most demanded product. And yeah, you listen yeah, to yeah. the most demanded product. Yeah. So, and who knows, maybe they'll allow different ways to get a, uh, get a hold of it over time. Like originally and initially to kick off the store interaction is yeah. active gym stores only, but then after some time, either a reprint, there's nothing that says it can't do another wave. Right. 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 It, like you can do different things. There's lots of ways for them to adjust this going forward. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see. But I, I kind of like it as it's stated in the bullets. I know people are going to complain, but yeah. And one thing I was wrong about that I thought if you asked if you asked me the question, is Flesh and Blood still gaining new players at a rapid pace? I would have said no before yesterday. I was wrong. It why do you say that? The amount of players that I overheard at tables saying that they just started in the last six months. Agreed. I think the equation isn't that they're gaining them at a rapid pace. It's are they gaining them faster than they're losing them? Yes. Because I'm still hearing stores, stories of stores stopping their local events. Yeah. I literally just saw something today. A guy took a break for three weeks and he was like the big advocate. And the two stores that he was the advocate for yeah. both stopped running events wow. and stopped carrying fab because he was gone for three weeks and, and it just piddled out while he was gone. That's and it's like nuts. that is that's sad and it's that's happening sad. and we've heard story again and again now granted all anecdotal and yeah. it's not the numbers yeah. use no. the numbers and it's being made up for by all the people coming in on heavy hitters so that's is it is it plus population minus population or flat population big question mark i think if we look at last scg con and the number of players and get a sense of how many were there before and how many were there this time you get a sense of the overall trend because that's a big, localized, big regional yeah. event. Yeah, but people came from all over for it. You got people sure. coming from that's Pittsburgh true. for it. That's true. Well, I mean, yeah. it's just it gives you a, a sense of Northeast. Maybe not the full yes. Northeast, yeah. but a chunk of Northeast, right? I, I agree. I agree. Northeast, yes. So um, that would probably give you a sense. And my guess is it's about flat. Because I remember, I thought it was 200 last time, but I, I, I can't remember again. I mean, like we I even said. had a Canadian presence. You played someone from Canada? No, Flake was there. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm not sure if that counts. I mean, it counts. He is Canadian, but yeah, he yeah. said all the things, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. Well, he wasn't sure if he was going to make it. But, oh, um, okay, okay. Yeah, he was just playing in it. That's um, cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so yeah, I think I think it's probably flat and or gaining slightly is my sense, but unfortunately, in localized bubbles it's it's falling away and so now you're stuck with just the the big metros yeah us is just so spread out it's it it's got to be hard to run something like this here especially from across the world oh absolutely yeah you know yeah i was actually thinking about that i was listening to um i think it was fluke was talking about how he ships free to japan and the, he's getting a lot of interest there and the shop's going great because oh, of that yeah, i imagine and I know James White said before that like their Asian market growth is insane. Like yeah, I believe so, that. I could easily see them putting the U.S. on somewhat of a back burner, um, and just focusing over in Asia because it's local to them, and it's way easier for them to be successful by focusing that close. I don't um, think they pump the brakes on the U.S., but I there's definitely... no brake pumping, yeah. but it's just not doing the things necessary to fix what the U.S. needs. Right. You know, not focusing on bending our our business to help the U.S. succeed because it doesn't matter as much as focusing on Asia would, you know, and then they do stuff that encourages Asia. Um, because, again, think about an Asia uh, local game store and competitive scene and the things that they want, need, expect versus America. Very different worlds. Yes. yes. So they have different culture, context, different ways they like to play, different like 
grinding out a million games for XP over there would be, I, I imagine, would be a no problem situation. Whereas here, people were complaining about it, which right? they did just change. They did, I know, but it's just like you see what I mean. Like, yeah. just focus on the easy, close, local. It would it would make sense from a business standpoint, in my perspective. But you know, I don't have the data, so maybe the U.S. market is ten times as big, and then that doesn't make sense anymore. You know. Yeah, you got to look at the actual numbers to drive that kind of decision making. But I could see something like that happening. Yeah, no, I could definitely see their focus being there right now because I mean it's a huge market for TCGs, and it's and new. It's so new. they have the yeah. opportunity to take all their learnings and maximize the effect in Asia. And it was already growing before it was localized, locally transmitted. Mm -hmm. I know like that's well, that's sort of the, the thing US. where I'm saying like, oh yeah, localizing the language. That's a step in that direction. Yeah. yeah. So, anyways. Yeah. Pretty exciting days. Yeah. Ooh. Absolutely. Is that a real one? A real oh one. my God. Someone, sorry, I'm skimming through Fab Twitter and someone did this amazing anime full art Kasai foil. And it's got, it's freaking gorgeous. Wow. I don't know how people do this stuff. It's crazy. Yeah. Send you a picture. Oops. Anyways, moving on. Topics. Yeah, Fallout. You want to talk about some Fallout? It's gone crazy. Has it? Yes. <laughs> yes, it has. Uh, it is sold out completely at the main distributor for Magic, at least the one that I have access to. And we're talking about both the. You mean Amazon? Ha, ha, ha. Um, but also there. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, both the the uh, Commander decks and the, the Collector. Collector's been sold out for a while, since like pre-release, basically. But Commander decks are gone there, too. Only the secondary one, which is more expensive, has it, um, which is crazy. Now, I watch this stuff pretty closely. I'm involved in chat groups about like, you know, how to sell singles and all this stuff. And historically, last 10 sets, all the way back. Uh, basically, there's a group that loves to buy the commander sets and then sell the singles because they typically have powerful things. Commander drives a lot of the secondary market in Magic. Um, and so those cards are just in high demand and they sell and it makes sorting easier. Instead of having to sort cards, it's pre-sorted, right? You just open all of them, put yep. them all in stacks and it just, you have all of them stacked up perfectly. It's nice and easy. Low, low labor, um, good margins, good sell-through rate, etc. cetera. Uh, Historically, you can get the Commander products, and we're talking, I'm not sure about Doctor Who, because I don't think I had access to this during Doctor Who, but Lord of the Rings for sure. Um, you have Doctor access to this Lord of the Rings? Yeah. Mm, I don't think so. Yeah. Never was mind. It? Keep playing. Yeah, I, I could be wrong. Maybe it was. Uh, maybe it was. Um, but point being that they basically sell out over time, but pretty quickly. So we'll say collector goes first off of distro lists. Commander decks usually go second, right? And I've never seen the commander decks fall off of availability before the release of the product. That has never happened in, in all the products I've watched. Um, and it happened with, with Fallout. So I don't know what that means. Maybe they cut print runs, right? Um, I was listening to uh, Kitchen Table TCG and Josh is like, no, this is insane. Apparently they did have a special, uh, a TCG player special, you know, one of those like front page dealies oh, for the yeah. commander decks. Oh, interesting. Oh, I did it, see that. Yeah. Yeah. And that boosted their sales by a lot. He's like, it's, he said, and go watch it yourself. He's like, it was insane. And the, the sell through rate on these is you know, kind of off the charts. Um, that said, is it completely sold out? You'll never get it again. I doubt it. No. Like, do we see a second wave? Almost certainly. Yeah. Um, so don't, don't go out there and FOMO. That's not what I'm trying to, to convey here, but I am saying that this has sold faster and, or the, the, uh, supply is lower, which considering what they did with collector boxes, would you be surprised if it's also low for commander? Uh, I, yes, I, I wouldn't be because okay. I think they probably tried to cut both of them specifically to drive the hype. Because oh, they want to, yeah. they want to guarantee Marvel. They want to guarantee Final True. Fantasy, True. and I think that's and what they they're trying to do. About Assassin's with it. Creed, not even mentioned. 
I mean, I don't know if they care about Assassin's Creed. <laughs> they're doing the weird box with Assassin's Creed. So I, I, know. Don't, I don't know what they're doing there. Um, yeah. But, you know, maybe maybe they care about it. I don't know. Um, but point being that this is a different situation than we saw with the previous ones. And I think Lord of the Rings, they actually kind of nailed it because it was available for a while, like a good while. Like, and you go on TCG player, you can get the Lord of the Rings commander decks for a reasonable price right now. It's not mm-hmm. like they're $200 a box. So mm-hmm. there, there was, in my opinion, a nice amount of supply gone from, um, you know, distro for a while now, probably three months now. Um, but still, widely available to the market for call it a year in total right i'm not sure if it will be a full year but you get the idea right that seems fine that seems totally fine for a specialty universes beyond product right so i feel like they nailed it with lord of the rings now granted i think that one was a lot easier to overprint and be fine than something like a fallout because you don't really know how much demand you have for that kind of crossover like yeah lord of the rings is like a natural uh, of course everyone wants that Yeah, exactly. You know, whereas I think it's a lot harder to to judge it and maybe they just misjudged. They're like Fallout's big, but it's not Lord of the Rings big. So let's print this much. Yeah. You know, so we don't have to do an Amazon dump. And then you can't reprint collectors. Well, yeah, that one was always going to be limited just by the the uh, the serial cards. But um, and, and so maybe they're just experimenting with that. I don't know, but it's definitely different. That's that is the point is the data point is different. We've never seen a sellout of. Um, the actual commander boxes that quickly. It usually takes at least a few months at distro for those to disappear. And this time they were gone before the pre-orders were done, <laughs> before, before street date, which is crazy. Yeah, and Amazon's it's, gone even with their higher prices. I know. And so we did want to talk about that. You saw a video of someone yeah. saying so, there was some Fallout collector boxes popping up. Yeah, Final Trade. Um, shout out to Final Trade. Uh, I watch him a decent amount. And he comes up with, he just, he's very attuned to the magic market. And he noticed and was getting messages from his patrons that Amazon was stealthily, just like for an hour or so, Commander decks would be back up. But they were. Oh, it was Commander decks. No, no, no. Sorry. Collector decks. Collector Collector boxes. I was like, oh. No, no. Collector boxes for $325, which is cheaper than they were. Yeah, because they're listed at four hundred. They definitely sold some at four hundred. Yes. And so I, I didn't. Not that I didn't believe him, but I was like, he told me he said what to do and to just keep it open in a tab, like the Amazon page for the collector box. And every couple hours, when you think about it, just check it, refresh it, and that's what I did. And I was able to get it to pop. And then I was able to add it to cart. I didn't pull the trigger because I had already ordered one. Um, but yeah, it was there. I was able to add it to cart for three twenty-five. I'm gonna I'm gonna add to my wish list, and it should alert me when it pops again. Yeah. See if it does it post release. I could see him doing it before the release, but um, yeah, I'm curious what that was because and it happened multiple stuff. times. Yeah, and I think Rudy was talking about this specifically with these larger vendors. They used to do it with he he had a whole video on this where it was it was like a card shop live, but not card shop live, one of these older ones, way yeah. before our time. Um, that used to do this as as well. And it was a a way to gauge ongoing demand, I think. They'd only put one box up and t- see how long it took for it to sell. Yeah. And use it as a gauge to see what supply they need to hold back to try to maximize their profit. He, he did a whole video on it. It was fairly recently. It was like in the last month or so. Um, and he talked about some of these games that these bigger retailers play to, to do it. The other, it was in the video. I think it was in the video on uh, shock pricing. You, did you see that one? Yeah. Where he talks about you put a, a price up. It was when I think uh, Modern Horizons popped up for, what was it, $500 a box or whatever. And everyone's like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> um, so... He talks about it in that video, I believe, and or a video around that time. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know what that is, you know, having it pop up and disappear, having it at a lower price. I, honestly, I'm guessing they're trying to see how low or how high, I guess, there's demand because 400 probably stopped selling like the volume probably dropped like a rock when it they pumped it to 400. 
a box. Yeah. Yeah. So they're probably trying to gauge what level is the right level to maximize their profits is my guess, because otherwise, why not just leave it up there for that price? Um, but we'll see. We'll see. Point being, as always, don't FOMO. No, don't, don't. <laughs> don't buy at $400 prices. I don't think it's worth it. No. Uh, Post release, what happens, everyone? Say it with me. Prices go down. Yeah. <laughs> it's always the case. And it has. Um, and it has. It has. It has. Exactly. So don't, don't expect it to just go straight to the moon. Everyone likes to say it's going to the moon, but they're full of shit. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it almost never does. Yeah. I mean, if you look on TCG Player, there were sales in the 450s. That's insane. That's unfortunate for those people. That's unfortunate okay. for those Let me people. scroll back, see if people that's, cancel That's them pure right. FOMO. That is pure FOMO. There's, holy crap, a lot sold over the weekend. I, have to I told back. you, the volume on this stuff was out of control. That's, Josh brought it up specifically, and I, I watch his data somewhat closely. Yeah. Um, there was 313. Yeah, someone sold for 313. Yeah. Yeah, there's some good prices. Yeah, there yeah, were this is, there were freaking insane. A couple, so many yeah, sales. yeah, four fifty. I'm seeing yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, not that many, but a few. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so nuts. Just be careful, guys. There's yeah. no. This stuff is around. You'll see it on eBay. You'll see like. Like what you else? can find it. And guess what? If you miss it, <gasps> you won't have the one product you care about this month, but have forgotten about by next month. Exactly. So exactly. who cares? Like, it's okay to miss them. It's okay. Yes. Says the guy who has every collector box ever created. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. But I'll tell you, a lot of them I got well after the fact and got them for really cheap because yeah. I stopped buying. I, I did by longer than I should have, but I think I, I know we talked about it on this yeah. podcast and you're like, just wait. And I started doing that. And sure enough, like a year later, I ended up buying all the ones I was missing for lower than they were at release. You're um, welcome. What's yeah. Thank you. That was, <laughs> a, that was a, that was a Tommy special and, and purely correct. So I uh, switched it up after uh, they started to like, I would not say not screw up, but correct the volumes with uh like uh, lost caverns yeah exactly i was like oh no these are not going down for the first time i was like okay i'm buying all the old ones and i'm gonna get back on getting them at you know post-release dip so although i'll tell you i don't know if i'm gonna do it for outlaws i wouldn't like yeah i think it's another wait six months you know or a Markov where it drops. drops like exactly. It's uh, Markov is back to the dump pattern, which is, you know, I'm not against it. It's fine. I'm sure stores hate it, but I, I actually liked the way they were going with Lost Caverns. They had it right. I don't know why they s screwed with that stuff, but whatever. But I am having fun with it. Like, Magic's doing fun. I'll tell you, the EVs on older stuff is insanely useful. Um, you can get stuff on eBay for like below distro cost because the stuff is still available at distro. And the EVs are so inverted that like you make real money on some of this stuff. Yeah. So it's kind of crazy. Um, but you just got to watch the data. That's the, that's the work. Checking the prices, checking the EV. Oh yeah. To absolutely. actual card sorting. Good guy. Yeah. Heaven forbid. Yeah. I have a lot of cards. I have a lot of cards. <laughs> so, uh, but that's pretty much it for Magic. Um, I think people are a little more excited for the Outlaw Juncture Junction than they were for Markov. Um, I could see that. I don't know if it's going to be like a, a banger of a set, sort of like selling any crazy amount, but it's a standard set, so you really shouldn't expect that from a standard set. I think Ixalan was a special circumstance, and Wilds was a throwback to a different time that, you know, really had people's hearts in my mind. Um, yeah. So I think that's why that one did well. And that one did not do as well as Ixalan. Right. Uh, it definitely did not. So, um, so we'll see, we'll see what happens. Yeah. If you can, Oh my God. If you sort by number of boxes sold fallout commander is the second highest in all of the data. Holy crap. And, yeah. Behind Lord of the Rings. And okay. it's right. yeah, so, like yeah, of course, Lord yeah. of the Rings wins, but like it, it just came out and it's yeah. second place. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh my god! Well, and I guess it's almost maybe like it's, universe. Yeah, maybe it's sold is out. Actually, a thing. Oh my god! It's the thing. It's not just a thing. It's the thing. And it's, it's so funny how we were talking about that like 
when it start when it first started, we were just like, is this the beginning of? Oh, of course. I mean, it's always if it works, it it they overdo it. Um, yeah. But the thing is, with it being such a varied target market, how fast can you actually overdo this? Yeah, you know, because you're not selling to the same people every time. The part of the problem of it being overdone is that it's the same people, and so they get sick of it. But if you're saying Doctor Who fans, Lord of the Rings fans, you know that you're selling to different people, so overdoing it isn't as much of a thing. Your core people that are trying to buy everything, yeah, they'll feel like it's overdone. But I don't know. This is it's a new era, and we get to watch the data and see how it unfolds. Yeah, that'll no, be interesting. It's gonna be fun. Um, anything else on the magic front? That's all I got. There were a lot of people playing magic at Star City Games. Yeah, and I a bet. lot of people yeah. playing Lorcana. Yeah, was a thing that I noticed and took note of. Um, and also, did you hear stores. any numbers on no. people? No. Nah, okay, there's just a bunch of side events, or was there a main tournament? Oh no, they definitely had a main tournament. Yeah, they, they had a, like a CEDH tournament, which I've yeah. never seen a cash yeah. prize CEDH before, which is crazy. Yeah, let me see. Shout out to our friends over at uh, Play to Win. Yeah. He's one of the uh, guys I I play. Uh, I don't play CEDH, but I play EDH with locally uh, every once in a while on the Magic Days. So. Yeah. Yeah, there was the core constructed 1K for Larpana, which was the Swiss rounds. For Larpana. Swiss Swiss. rounds based on attendance, cut off the top eight. I think that's what I watched or saw going on because that was going on during the. Should we buy some more no, decks just so we know how it plays? I talked about that yesterday. With I know somebody. we we have talked about it multiple times when it was first announced. We were like, yeah. I guess we should buy like some starter decks and just see how it actually plays. But yeah, I'd be down. I've never to do been that. motivated. <laughs> yeah, that's that's where I'm at. That's where I'm at. I just don't really feel like it. And when we All get right, together, well, I'd there's much there's a two Star Wars there's right. a starter deck set of two for sixteen dollars. Okay. All right. I'll buy it. Uh, I'm right. just going to buy it. And if we ever get a chance. All right. We'll do it. To actually play it, we'll play it. Because for $16, that is a very low <laughs> barrier to entry. Yeah. yeah. Just worth I don't to care be able if it just sits on my shelf it. forever. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Just to say we, we actually read the rules. We did it. Because that's what we do when new <laughs> games come out. We learn them. We should at least learn it. Yeah. Because I'm curious. Like, my first thought and the reason that I said that is because I'm like, how does it even how does a 1k work like is the game in a state where a competitive tournament can function well or well, is this like a, a mess you know what i mean we're talking a little bit early because i scrolled a little bit farther on saturday they had a core constructed 5k yeah that's what i mean like they, it's not they're putting together organized play in a you know similar to magic similar to fab sort of mindset and it's like does the gameplay support it does it does that actually work I don't think we will be able to make that decision off the starter decks, but well, yeah. we'll have a sense of how these yes, game yes, mechanics yeah. are, you know. Yeah. And then we can look at what some of the power cards are and what yeah. that would do. Speaking of power cards and transitioning to Star Wars, there's another 1K for it on Saturday too. Holy moly! Yeah, it's it's a real thing, man. Lurkan is real. I just it's not going to go away. It. It's huge. Yeah, I know. It's huge. It's, it's going to outstrip. It's going to suck the life out of a lot of stuff um yeah, the question think, is how long does it hold up how long does it last and how long is it supported right um, yeah absolutely Those and that's all I, I mean i i think there it's got a longer i think it's got better legs than most things that are new mm -hmm. because of the ip mm -hmm. and because of the fact that it's drawing in a different crowd mm -hmm. the, i mean think about it. your store and you want more people in your store buying your products and now you have a product that brings a different crowd in not the same crowd jumping from game to game, but a different crowd. That's massive. Yeah, because when you have people jumping from game to game, you lose people in other games. Yeah, and it causes you to have dead product on yes. your shelf. So it, this is way better than any, like, than your fabs, than any newer TCG. This is way better because it's bringing a different crowd, less dead product probably. And and I think the margins are good, right? Isn't that the thing I they were saying? I think so. It's back yeah, down think, to, like, MSRP. Yeah, but MSRP is margin. That's good margin, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Unlike some games that sell under MSRP, you know what I mean? Yeah, at MAP. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, those or stores under. don't like yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So it's uh, it's for stores, I can totally see the support. And then, of course, 
bringing in new players, different yes. types of players yes. is huge across all TCGs because some of them will eventually try other games. Yes. So I think it's, it's useful that way too. Yeah. How's one piece doing? Fine. Great. Yeah. Not star city games, but no. Okay. I wasn't sure thing. if they had it there. No, it does its own things. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't follow that game very closely. I just, I don't know. It's not for me. And then also oh. just like, you know, those signs that like just, and we'll get into it with Star Wars, but the track record of a company and yes. Bandai does not have the strongest uh, no, history. they don't. They're trying and, to do it different, but yeah, they right. don't have a good history. Right. They basically just, they recently killed their uh, Dragon Ball Z game and then basically remade it to be from what I can tell, a reskin of One Piece that's just now Dragon Ball. So it plays very similarly. And then, so they can, and those have been going crazy too. Oh, I thought, I thought, I didn't realize One Piece was a unique set of mechanics. I thought it's all not. Bandai games were the same mechanics. No. Oh, okay. I They're thought that's just different. what they did. Yeah, no. I thought their mechanics were like the same and they just skinned them differently. I didn't realize this was a, a different game. Yeah, I know nothing about Bandai. I was, uh, just the just the rumors, like only, literally nothing. I've only dipped my toes in. Yeah, I got the starter deck for One Piece and played a couple games with Gary, and that was that was it. So we ruined my transition to Star Wars. I started to say I know, it. it was a really good transition too. I'm sorry. <laughs> Perfect it wasn't transition really good. into Star Wars Star about Wars, IP yeah. and no, it was about a uh... oh shoot, I don't even remember how I started. But anyways, what I was gonna say. <laughs> is uh, I was looking at Star Wars cards after we played, yeah. and I saw Emperor Palpatine showcase. Yeah. And man, that looks cool. <laughs> yeah, that's the one Scott pulled. <laughs> Green, black, come yep. on. Yeah. It looks real good. Yeah. And his power is amazing. Comes out at eight, though. So those aggro decks, well, yeah, might be slow. dead before he even comes out. Yeah, deal one damage to a unit and draw a card, though. Yeah. Come on. Seems pretty that's good. That's so good. That's so good. Yeah, I was like, really oh, bad. I want to play the Emperor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so let's talk about Star Wars. Yeah, so we got to play some games. Uh, we did some sealed together on Friday, which was a ton of fun. Uh, I went to the store to pick up all my product that wasn't there. Uh, so I'll be picking that up on Monday. Uh, I was able to pick up some from a different store to get my fix for this weekend. Um but then I will be picking more up from them. I think they're due in Monday. Basically, FedEx screwed them over, and they weren't able to get their product. Yeah, small store problem sucks. Yeah, uh, they are not happy about it. I wasn't happy about it. It's fine, but it is what it is. Yeah, it's not their fault. Um, but so I was. They did have some pre-release boxes still. And so I grabbed two of those, and that's what John and I used to build some decks and play some games on an awesome two-player hyperspace mat that looks awesome. Um, I think it really just does add, between that and the tokens, it really just add, does add this quality to the game, I guess. Mm -hmm. GameGenic did a really good job with all of their accessories for the game. Play mats, deck boxes. I was even kind of impressed with the sleeves. Now, we only played a couple games. I could see, I have heard people that were using the same sleeves for multiple pre-releases did get some like nicks on some of the sleeves. Like they aren't, they may not hold up forever. Right on. But that's not unusual for themed sleeves it's to counteract that super common. They sell these double sleeves packs that I think are sold out online or somewhere. They were, they're hard to find. A lot of these accessories are hard to find because they sold very well this weekend. Um, but they'll they'll be coming back, I'm sure. Um, so essentially, instead of putting the inner sleeve and then the outer sleeve with the art, you have you put the card in the art sleeve and then you put the second sleeve over top of that. So it protects the art sleeve and the card inside. makes sense yeah just was interesting in flipping that around oh man 
So uh, I hated the game because uh, I lost. had a pretty bad seal pool and I played for eight hours. And I went, lost every I went through game. your seal pool. You had a Millennium Falcon in there. You could have built way better decks. Well, you didn't tell me I know, how. You I said know, you were going to help me and then you didn't. So I know. Well, you didn't ask for help. <laughs> well, boy, why would I ask for help? I was just going to build stuff. I, didn't, yeah. I don't know. I was there to test out. Anyways, I lost a lot. It sucked. It was terrible. Uh, but honestly, looking at cards individually, it's way more exciting than uh, the playing we were doing. Yes. Yeah. Um, but you learn yeah, the mechanics. Just, you feel well. Yeah. That was that was the important yeah. part. And I didn't like. I don't. I don't care. I, I expected to lose. Tommy played two days worth of this stuff and then came over and squashed my face. What a surprise! Yeah, right. Yeah. Like, did, what, did I expect anything different? No, not at all. Because I couldn't even. I, like, I know we played that one time, but I didn't remember any of the yeah, rules yeah. until we started. And I'd been playing on tabletop a lot, and I've been yeah, playing. Yeah. yeah. Like, what a shock! Someone yeah. nice practice beats your face in. Yeah. Um, Downsides to it, in my opinion, uh, there's a lot of lack of interactivity and uh, like combat tricks, instances, things to react to things, which is it's designed that way. And I think that's OK. It just was hard for me to adapt to from yeah. the things I do play. Yeah. Uh, so instead of thinking three turns ahead like you need to for this game, I was wishing I had the ability to react to the inevitable. Right. Yes. It became apparent that it was too late to do anything. Yeah. It's um, very much a think a couple of heads turns ahead. Turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Which I just never, I didn't, I didn't quite grok yeah. even by yeah. the end of the day. I understood it, but I wasn't acting on it. Put it that way. Um, so I lost a lot. It was sad. Um, that said, I also don't, didn't, don't think the heroes I had were all that great compared to some of the stuff I'm looking at. I'm like, Jesus Christ, these are awesome. Yeah, so there like, are common rare, common yeah, rare. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I guess I maybe you know it, it wasn't just the heroes, but how I was playing. But also, like if I had some of these badass heroes, it might be a different story. I mean, you were playing. You also Sabine, said you right. had the best pool you saw over the entire yes, time. Yes, that is another that is another key factor. So, um, Palpatine looks amazing. Yes, I would play that to death. Uh, Grand Admiral Thrawn looks pretty good. He seems super fun in Twin Sons. Yeah, that's, uh, let's get there in a second because yeah. I wanted to have yeah. a whole conversation on that. <laughs> um, Boba Fett? I was like, oh, okay, yeah, I'd play that. The, he looks good. Key, the top uh, mid-range deck, yeah. I can see it. I like him. I like him. I would just actually just build a deck for that. back, yeah. yeah. Yeah, right? Like, come on. And then uh, uh, Leia... Mm -hmm. At first, I'm like, I don't understand it. Why do you tap to attack when mm -hmm. you can just attack? Like, why do that, right? But it's, it's again, action economy. Having yes. a double attack. Yes, two attacks puts, in a row. That, yeah. that puts you ahead, right? Mm -hmm. That's the game, right? That's the whole game. Uh, so, which is really good. Um, yes. So, and it feels like blue. She's blue art. So, it feels like... Uh, Feels like magic blue cheating extra turns, cheating extra card hand. She, green you know? white? she has green, right? The background is blue. Though. So oh, for yeah. me in my head, I'm like, I'm like, oh, that's just like a blue deck uh, for magic. So yeah. uh, definitely looks good. Um, and I'm sure there's others, but I was just I was yeah. flipping through the yeah. cards. I'm like, man, I wish I had some good cards, <laughs> which, as you just said, I had that I ignored. Yeah. Um, it was a yellow. It was a color you weren't even looking at. Yeah, well, I only played... So what did I play? I played Red Red something. Red, Red, for, White. Right. What was it, White? Sabine, yeah. Sabine oh, yeah, because it was the Rebels. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Yeah, and I probably should have told you, but I didn't think about it. That just Tommy wanted to yourself. spike me. He no, spiked I didn't. No, he's I was like, just excited. He's like, let's just make excited. sure John makes all the mistakes. So I was I just excited to play with you. <laughs> and destroy his soul. <laughs> I was just excited to play with you. That's fine. Uh, <laughs> Limiting yourself in in sealed, where you only have a certain amount of cards. Limiting yourself to two color aspects is rough. It was a huge mistake. Yeah, which I did learn. Yeah, and then uh, we rebuilt text again. Yeah, and then I did. What was the? What did I do the second? I did, I know I had the green base, but I don't remember mm -hmm. what was the hero I was using. Oh, is was it Vader? Vader, yeah. Yeah, Vader. So is that red black? Mm-hmm. So red, black, green. green, and green is really good. But unfortunately, my pool had a little bit too much uh, supporty stuff when I did that. Not enough yeah. units, I think. I kept getting caught out with nothing in my hand that I could actually put on the board. Right. Um, so you know that's sealed for you. That, yeah. that happens. Yeah. There's nothing, nothing shocking there. Um, still, it's a lot of fun aspects to it. You could see it. Yeah. No, I'm having a ton of fun with it. 
Um, and I'm trying to see this this commander version. I really like that idea. Yeah. Like, if anything's going to make me actually buy cards for this game, that feels like the thing. Um, so explain that for the crowd that doesn't know. Yeah, so it is called the Twin Suns format. It is your commander competitive, three to four players, 50 plus card deck. Uh, the minimum deck size for Twin Suns will increase as more sets are released. Um, and the reason being you only have so many cards and it is a singleton format. So it's the primary multiplayer format for Star Wars Unlimited. It's a fun, unpredictable format to play with friends like Commander. Special deck building rules allow for unique experience compared to other formats. So it is allowing you... Uh, this is short enough, I'll just read this little overview. A constructed format utilizing the game's multiplayer rules. Twin Suns is a fun alternative way to play Star Wars Unlimited with a unique approach to deck building. Take on multiple opponents in a free-for-all and see if you can emerge victorious. To play the Twin Suns formats, you must build a deck ahead of time, adhering to the following rules. Your deck must include exactly two leaders, so you get more color aspects. These leaders must share either Heroism White or Villainy Black aspect. You will start, so you can't do Luke Vader. Um, right, that makes sense. Yeah, you yeah will, uh, keep it keep it thematic. I love yeah, it. Yeah, you will start the game with both leaders in play. You'll be able to use both of their abilities throughout the game. Your deck must include exactly one base. Your deck must include a minimum of fifty cards to draw, and you cannot have more than one copy of any card in your deck. So singleton. Love singleton. Love it. Note, as more sets are released, the minimum deck size for the Twin Sun format will increase. Typically, the winner of Twin Sun's match is determined by best of one game. Each game should take an average of 45 to 80 minutes to complete, depending on the player count. And you could do pods. That's yeah. the other thing I love about it. Like, talk about everything I want in a game. A social yeah. game with the little politics that are going to happen, singleton yeah. format, more exposure to different cards, right? That mm -hmm. way you can sell penny cards to this sort of format. Like, I just love it. Everything about this feels good to me from store perspective, from, yeah, just across the board. So, yeah. Yeah. And talking about singles, I think this is going to be, and taking a quick look at TCG Player this morning, because singles are up, they're out of the pre release yep. thing. Yep. Um, I think you are going. You are seeing a lot of value in that hyperspace foil. Anything? Yes. Yeah, so. they have super super rare collectibles in this game. Yes. That's the other thing. Not only the beautiful art ones, but the beautiful arts in that in the hyperspace foil. Is that what? Or no, yes. no. The hyperspace is the is the showcase style. No, it's no, the, no. What's the foil called? No, no. Showcase is the leaders only. Each okay. leader has a showcase, and it is. You do not need it to play. It is no. the same exact card as the five twenty cent basic leader. The <laughs> rares, I think, are like a dollar or two, the rare leaders. And so, again, not a big deal. Um, but what's really cool about them is the art is different. And the foiling treatment is incredible. I've seen a couple of these. And the art being different but it was the same prompt that was given to the original artist so two artists got the same prompt and one was the showcase and one is the regular so they're very similar like mm -hmm. palpatine sitting on his throne like when he was watching vader and luke like that kind of setting prompt and then just two artists interpretation of that um so you have that as a very high collectible they're supposed to be about one. We do know all of the pool rates. They did come out with that. Uh, it's on the website. It's supposed to be about one in 12 boxes. You're supposed to get one of these. Um, but that is not a guarantee because the Scott from the Golden Dice podcast let me know that they opened 22 boxes, did not pull one. <laughs> yeah. They're rare. I like collectibles that are hard to come by. <laughs> yes, they are rare. And being part of Star, Star Wars, Wars IP, even if this game fails, people will still collect those. Correct. Because they collect McDonald's Star Wars toys from 20 years ago. <laughs> Correct. And then, so, and what makes pack opening so much fun 
is every card has a chance in every slot to be a hyperspace, which hyperspace is just extended art, borderless. The art goes all the way to the edges, and they are pretty cards, foil or yeah. not. So then yeah, there's the hyperspace foil, which there's one foil per pack. It's the last card in the pack. Um, so you're working your way up to that foil the whole time. But each time you're pulling, it's not just like, oh, let me shuffle all of these commons off, and then we'll look at the uncommons and the rare, right? And the foil. Mm -hmm. Because all of those commons have a chance to be a hyperspace. And there's, I think, two out of three packs have a hyperspace. But I've had packs that have had multiple hyperspaces in the same pack. So that's also possible, which is super cool. So oh, I get then if you think about it, you got one foil slot, right? So mm -hmm. what is your chance of that foil spot being a hyperspace? And then what is the chance of that hyperspace foil to be a legendary? It is very low. Yeah. So they're worth even quite a rares, bit. even rares. Um, and especially like even the playables, like the playable common hyperspace foils, like Super Laser Technician. I, w I meant to look that up before. Um, but I just think that there is, it's at a, it, it will do the Pokemon thing where there is very high collectibles. Mm-hmm but they aren't needed for play and it will be a cheaper game to play. Yeah. Now that I said, it is, thousand agree. it is a, there are some cards that are high, but they are coming down. But remember, oh, this is, is release day. One. Don't, yes. don't FOMO guys. Don't, don't do not buy the $575 Boba Fett. Right. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> no, those are the hyperspace. So those actually I know, I know, but I'm just saying, don't do that. This is release weekend. Don't do it. Yes. Yeah. Don't do it. It's release weekend. I don't care. It's release weekend. Give yeah. it some time. But then Tommy you hasn't like... even gotten his boxes yet. So yeah. Uh, well, I do. I do have boxes. I'm just saying, like you know, it's not. You haven't opened. You haven't listed. The, oh, the yeah. the yeah. market will get flooded over the next few weeks with people yes. listing cards. So we have yes. no idea what any of these are worth. It's going to be lower than it is today. Yeah, and I am going to be paying attention to this quite a bit. So, and I may even start up a video series on it, but we cool. shall see. Um, so, I will definitely play the commander style with you if you have other people that are willing to play that. Yes. Uh, get a pod together. We can make videos on that if you want to, if people are interested in seeing that. Either way, I want to play it. Yes. I don't know that I want to buy cards. You don't need to buy cards. I'll build your I was deck. Just, I was going to say, you said before it's you like, build a deck, could you yeah. build me a yeah. Boba yeah, yeah, yeah. Fett deck? Boba Fett, sure. <laughs> Boba Fett. <laughs> yeah. yeah, just let me know. He seems good. I like yeah. him. <laughs> yeah, the, um, yeah, I plan on opening a lot of this game. Um, cool. So I will very easily be able to have multiple Twin Suns decks. Yeah, I mean, and that's the thing. It seems like with a singleton format, it should be pretty easy to build those, right? Probably pretty cheap across the board with a few exceptions, exceptions. here and there. Yeah, yeah. like Darth Vader still commanding 60 bucks as a plane. Oh, it's card. a cheese. Wow. Wait, but there's one in like every starter kit. No. Different Darth Vader? Yes. Oh, the 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 playable, not the commander? The unit, yes. I uh, got it, got it. Yeah, that makes, sense. that makes sense. Darth Vader commanding the first legion. What about the um the bases? Uh I we talked about there was a special base. Yes. Are they are they high demand at all or no? Uh the most expensive one is twenty bucks. Okay. So non, yeah, this is going to be a very. But they can be game hyperspace, game. and that's a hyperspace one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is going to be a very reasonable game with good collectibles. I, yes. I like it. I, think, I I like that style. Yeah, because you can get once you get down past all the hyperspaces and the legendaries, it becomes pretty pretty affordable. But then once like this is a game that foiling out your deck will be. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> super expensive. Don't do it. Yeah, I'm not, yeah, I plan on building my decks as hyperspace, but not foil. Foil, yeah. unless I pull it. But, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I also just hyperspace. really like the look of the hyperspace. Like a deck of hyperspace just looks really, really cool. 
Uh, and then, of course, it's their foils, so they curve, um, like any foil. But not as egregious so far, but I also haven't had them out as long. Um, Who goes with Boba Fett for the Twin Sons? Would it be Palpatine? What about Thrawn? Maybe Thrawn? What's Thrawn do? doubles up on your colors. You have to double up. On oh, oh, he's also yellow. Mm-hmm. I see. I see. Mm-hmm. I was like, you have to double on the, the uh, villainy, but yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're right. So, you're, so what would I want access to then? You could go red with Grand Inquisitor. You could go red with IG-88. Or yeah, you could go green sucks. with Palpatine. Green is good. I would say Palpatine. Yeah. Or or you go eyed in with blue and get blue and get all those removals. I do like blue too. Yeah. Oh, it's so hard. He draws it. Maybe Palpatine because it is card draw and resource refresh. Yeah. Well, the, the thing good. is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because Palpatine comes out at eight, right? Yeah. yeah. Boba comes out at five. And Aiden comes out at six. So it really depends on if you're playing, I guess, both control. Aiden and Emperor are both control. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a question of what type. Yeah, so it's whether you want blue or green. Yeah. Because then being able to have Bobo come out at five and then Aiden come out at six, I mean, that's... That is pretty good. Turn five and six, you're taking control of the board. Yeah. I'll tell you something else that was... I didn't really fully understand until I was thinking about it later. And by the way, I was thinking about this game <laughs> after yeah. we played for, yeah. for a lot. Like it, it was stuck in my head. So I was thinking about like, how could I have done better and the mechanics and stuff. And one of the things is I built, I ignored things like Millennium Falcon and expensive stuff because I was worried about curve, but I built with a magic curve in mind of starting at one and you start at two. I did tell you that at the beginning. You did, you did, but I didn't really grok it like i didn't do anything about it you yeah. told me but i already had my deck built yeah, and yeah, yeah. the next time i built it i didn't really think about it so i just kind of forgot so i had a lot more ones and twos in my decks than i should have um because i wanted to make sure i could get stuff out i wanted to be able to get two things out in a turn to try to get ahead of the action economy thing but the reality is you got to be higher on the curve or you should be a little higher on the curve because you start higher on the curve it's turn one is two plus resource turn two is three plus resource you know what i mean so it's like Having a few ones in there is fine, but it really should be a minor amount, not a large amount. Correct. Whereas like a magic curve, you typically have the most twos, but you have a, a lot of ones as well. Right. So that you have things to do. Yeah. And late game, you you play that one. That's your action. Like that's a sad action compared. It to- is a sad action, which I didn't even think about. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like a one is almost a waste of time unless it's doing something super effective. And there are some strategies that want you to waste time. I don't understand. What what do you mean? Basically, like you want a, your opponent to do something first. There are certain mm. situations. Got it. Like you want them to play out their attacks first before. Yeah, I was trying to do that late in the day. I was yeah. tr- there was one particular situation where I knew if I put this thing out, you were going to react and do something terrible to it. So I kept delaying. I kept doing other shit trying to get you to use up your resources and you you dodged it you didn't do it and you yeah. beat me anyways and i was pissed <laughs> <laughs> he saw it coming <laughs> um so and i just ran out of things to do so i was like well i guess i gotta put it out and then you did you, you yep. slapped it as soon as i put it out i was yep. like damn it that's i knew you was gonna do that yep yep so and you kept i think you sensed that i was waiting and so you were derping around doing silly things too i was mm-hmm. like dang it mm-hmm. come on mm-hmm. and then you run out of actions <laughs> Yeah. Possible actions. Yeah. Because once you take initiative, you can't do anything but pass. Yeah, but that was like late in the day. So the fact that I didn't even really fully get that until that time, it's, uh, it was yeah, inevitable. It, it, I, was I mean, my butt it's, kicked. it's an easy to learn, easy to play game, but there are definitely things that you will learn strategy wise after even just a couple weeks of playing that you can really see the depths of this game. Because it is a very well designed game. Now, how does that translate? Like, this first set is a very well-designed game. What happens when set two comes, set three, set four, we'll see. But we do know that they are, they have said that they are on working on, like, set eight or nine or something. They have seven sets done. Um, 
and four are like three or four are already printed in in the US, I think. So yeah. release dates won't be missed. Which is nice. Except if FedEx fucks it up. But <laughs> except for FedEx. Yeah. Um there's also like just generally so I guess something worth noting is that uh Fantasy Flight has a hard time yeah. sticking with games. Uh but that said they also aren't afraid to sell them off to others who want to continue them. Yeah. So I'm not so worried, especially with a seven set lead uh, about it's four a year, three year. Seven set is there's three sets a year. So, okay. three, so they're two years out, right? They're working on year three. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, um, I mean, that's, that's good. That's a very good sign. Yeah. So, and yeah. that they, they really thought about, because I think destiny didn't really have any like special cards. Like it was all player driven. Whereas this is leads with large opportunity for collectors. It does. Well, I, with a with a Star Wars IP, it's similar to Disney. Yeah. It has a built in collector base. Yeah. It just there's people that collect anything Star Wars, period. Yeah. Like if it's Star Wars, they have it. They buy it and they put it on the shelf. Yeah. Um, so same with Disney. So that's that's a really positive thing. I'm curious how this plays out with Lurkana and this at the same time because I feel like they're the same people. People that collect Disney stuff and Star Wars stuff, maybe not exactly the same, but man, there's some crossover. There, yes, there is crossover. I mean, it is a Disney thing now, but it hasn't always been. So, yeah, it is. It does say it has Disney on the packs, but so Disney has two trading card games out right now with two different board gaming companies. Yeah, what? Is Disney about to take over everything? What's happening? Yes. Welcome to. <laughs> always has. <laughs> always has. Always has been. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah. Um, stay tuned. We're definitely going to be opening some boxes on the channel. Um, that may happen today. We'll see. Um, yeah. Anything else you wanted to touch on? No, we covered a lot of ground. We did. We did. This was a longer one. Uh, we had a lot but to talk about. We did. We did. It was, it was a good fun. week. It was a good week. I played Sorcery this week. That was hey. the other thing. I got to get back and do that, and it was a lot of fun. Again, still. And I got <laughs> to play. Weeks. We found out I got to meet your Sorcery player friend. Yeah, he was I there played for against, Star Wars. Yeah, I played against him at one of the Star Wars pre-releases. Yeah, yeah he was know. excited about that. Yeah. We oh, chatted you, about you, that. Yeah, nice, nice. He was a very nice guy. Yeah, Hope I was I like, oh, you it. might have met some of my friends. I don't know, because uh, I wasn't I couldn't remember which ones you went to. Like yeah, if that was the story you went yeah. to or not. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So I'll talk to him next time. About it. I think we're we're planning to play again this week because uh, I was sick. I didn't want to expose him, yeah, so we didn't right. play. But now after all this time going back, we ended up just playing three rounds with the same decks. Usually we switch it up because <laughs> we each have a bunch of decks. Yeah. And uh, it was just a blast. They were such a good matchup. It, yeah. it was just so good. I won two out of the three and he won one, but it was they were close fights all around. It was just a wild time and it's always fun to play. It's such a, well, we play it in such a casual way and we yeah. just don't care. And it's sure. so fun to play I mean, that I way. I think that's mind. what sorcery is supposed to be, right? I hope, but when I tried to bring it to our other card friends, they they oh. went meta and hardcore like immediately their first time playing. That's I'm like, what I'm guys. saying. It's supposed. to I was to like, be. guys, you're ruining this game for me. Supposed to be. <laughs> supposed to be. Yeah. Well, they just did a giant tournament out yeah. in uh, where was that? Washington State, somewhere. Okay. Um, and that went apparently really well. Team Covenant covered it. Uh, they had a final that had unexpected avatar avatar of air which is the alpha set avatar um of the air elemental uh and they got to the finals they did not win but the uh the sorcerer won with a i think it was fire earth deck mm -hmm. um and that was a wild game too but there, it, there's so, it's so there's so much room for different types of play and i love that the finals were like totally off meta decks because the meta is typically considered the uh death dealer or whatever because it brings cards back to do value again on, mm -hmm. on, uh, enter battlefield triggers. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's what it was before in the last tournament they had. And that's totally gone now and nothing changed. No cards, no new yeah. cards, nothing. It's just, there's so much room for exploration of deck. Uh, it's just, there's a lot of fun things in this game that way. So I love it. Nice. We were both talking about, we can't wait till they start showing off some of the new set. So I think it will hold engagement for maybe old fogies like me. Uh, that can wait a year for things and have some patience. Uh, 
I think it will still hold some some interest and in sway even uh, doing one set a year or two sets a year. So we shall see. Yeah. I think there's um, just something to be said about limiting card play and keeping it offline that helps metas change differently yes. than when you're able to just grind a bunch of games. Yeah, that said, it, it's been online since before it was released. Yeah, on tabletop, sure. Yeah, yeah. that's where most people play, actually. Because right. it's easier. Because it's a small community, so most of the tournaments are actually through tabletop. Right. But so, and that's fine. And I think that's great. And I, but I don't think that's the same as having like a Talishar. No. Yeah. Something to grind practice on. Yeah, yes. Yeah, that's sure. what I mean. Like you still yeah. have to find someone to play with, hop in. Like it's a thing. It's not. It is. Hit Although, a button, get matched with somebody. Actually, it is. No. It is. They have a bot that they've attached to the tournament organizer Discord. Oh. No. And okay. you push a button and it sets up a looking for group uh, notification or looking for game and it will auto match you with other people looking for games. So it they they kind of have that. But it's it's not just on a website. You have to get into the Discord. You have to you have to be certain depths into the game. Yeah, I mean how hard is it to get on a Discord? I know, <laughs> I know, I know, so, I know. Like, I don't know if it's that much bigger of a barrier. Right. Yes, it doesn't auto match you in a client, but close enough. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas I've also seen there's a uh, pixel porn for Lorcana where you can download a client, mm. which is a non official exe file, like playing, like people are playing these games on YouTube. And you can queue for games and stuff. It's wild. I wonder how long that lasts. I'm surprised it has lasted. I think people have gotten over the idea of like canning side projects that are supportive of the game. Yeah, that makes it's sense. It's too dangerous. The the brand damage. That makes sense. For, for trying to stop it is so like it's a crapshoot. It's a good chance you lose people over it. So why? Why stop love? I agree. You know? I agree. But I also so. want one for Star Wars. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> is what is yeah. where the road was going with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I gotcha. Yeah, yeah. I'm not a fan of uh, Felt Table generally. Yeah. Sadly, I learned. I, I loved it with Fab, but I, that's where I realized its weakness and and decided it's probably best not to to rely on it to learn things. Yeah. Because I learned poorly. I learned very badly. Yeah. It taught me bad habits. All right, sorry, I that's re-extended okay. this. By that's just okay. Sorcery. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> gotta get our sorcery segment in. I just, I was just excited I got to play. <laughs> no, I know, I know, I know. But cool. Well, that does it for this week's podcast. If you made it this far and aren't already, please think about subscribing so you don't miss next week's podcast. You can also hit the bell so you definitely know when it and you get a notification when that comes in. Shout but, out to the long-term fans that always come back. Yes. We appreciate you. We do. All 40 some of you. It's about right. <laughs> it's about right. But you are appreciated and uh, it's enough for us. So It is. Like I'm not trying to do anything no. different. We love no. it. We do what we want to do and if people enjoy it, that's great. So, yep. until next week, we will catch you guys later. Have a good one.